that. And we are really excited to bring a different um, version of our couch chat. Normally we're in person, but um, due to some circumstances, we are all in different parts of the country right now and really excited to talk about our goals and what we're excited about for the upcoming um, hunting season. We have a lot of different regions that are represented right now, and I'm going to start off with myself. I am Heather Sellen. I am the pro staff from the Midwest region, and then next to me. I forgot. My name is Todd. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, the, I'm the staff manager, obviously, in Michigan, Midwest region, so excited to be here, excited to talk about our goals. Kendra? Why do I keep getting muted? Are you trying to get rid of me? I'm from the southeast. I'm from the southeast region, the muted region. <laughs> Michael. Yeah, pro staffer from Michigan here in the Midwest. And Chad. Chad Jones from Texas, so South Region. Uh, field staffer. Awesome. Well, we're going to start off right right away with um, Michael's got some really great news with his uh, daughter getting a nice doe during um, youth season. So you want to tell us about that real quick? Yeah, uh, like you're going to hear in this couch chat, we're going to talk a little bit about our 2023 goals for the hunting season. And uh, I don't know if you can hear the kids upstairs or not. But <laughs> all of a sudden, I love it. <laughs> So uh, I don't know if they knew we were recording now, but that sounds pretty typical. <laughs> got my youngest up there riding her new bike. She's had a birthday party. So if you uh, hear that, that's what's going on. But uh, no, one of our goals was to get our uh, oldest daughter on some deer this year. She's put in the effort in the off season and she's made it clear that she wants to, uh, you know, start hunting with her mom and I and uh, opening evening of the uh, youth weekend. We were able to get her behind the house in the uh, blind over the food plot, and she made a great shot on a nice big doe. So we're excited. That's awesome. Is that real loud, guys? No, you're good. You're good. <laughs> yeah. I thought she it's was the just drum roll. Here. <laughs> it sounds so loud to me that I think there's no way you can't hear those kids. <laughs> hey, that's real life. The kids around us, so when your parents, it's, they're always around. <laughs> oh, yeah. You know, one thing I told Heather just yesterday, I'm like, if you watch the, the videos, which um, hopefully it, um, is the beginning of this video, but you'll see our, our goals that we kind of made. But one, one common theme that I thought was really cool was we all, none of us mentioned we're out to shoot the biggest deer. Mm -hmm. We're out to get the biggest buck. All of us mentioned that we're out to help give other people chances. We're out for alternate goals, you know. Um, I thought that was cool. That was really cool that, you know, because for me, from my standpoint, you always want to get a big buck, but it doesn't happen very often. That one I shot last year was the biggest buck I've ever shot. And um, so I look at it as a been there, done that, you know what I mean? Now, who, who else can I get involved in that and to feel that and to, 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 to experience the outdoors and in in that aspect? And I thought, you know, so that, that's one of our my main focus. And like I said, the common theme was it seems like everybody, I know Kendra was talking about a neighbor that she really wanted to help out this, this year. And that was her goal, just like she helped me out with the turkey last spring. Yeah. <laughs> so. Uh, I get a thrill out of helping somebody else get one. I, I get just as excited when I see them get their, you know, buck or their turkey. It, when you shot your turkey, that, that excited me. It's like I shot it. Uh -huh. Even though I uh, had a beardless turkey in the end. <laughs> right. <laughs> it, it, was, it should have been no shave November. <laughs> <laughs> Chad, what are your plans for this for this upcoming year? Well, you know, as I kind of mentioned, uh, in years past, that's kind of been my goal, right, is, is, man, I want to shoot a big deer. And then, you know, if I got a big deer, then the next year I'm like, well, I want to get a bigger classification deer, you know, and it, and it just turned into uh, just a lot of pressure, you know, of, each year it's like I would get a, a deer I was after or a, a bigger caliber deer and then I 
then I'd look back and I'm passing on deer that most people wouldn't pass on. And it really wasn't because their age. It was just because I'm like, you know, I'm after a booning crocket or now I'm after a 200 inch deer, you know, and it became so consuming that it was taking away from the joy of hunting, you know, to where it's, um, it, it's just, um, I don't know. It, it was hard to explain it, but it was putting, it's almost like the hometown football team, you know, to where like once they win, then everyone expects them to win. So it was like all my family and everybody is just going, Oh, well, you got to kill one bigger than the next year. And it was, it was putting so much pressure on me. It was taking the fun out a little bit. And uh, so, so my goal was just to go, you know what? I'm not, I'm not out chasing a mega giant. If I, if I get the opportunity to shoot one, great, but I'm not just going to be so specific on a particular deer, you know, like I normally am um, and, and really just focus on my daughters getting out. So my, my oldest daughter, um, she shot her first year when she was 10. Um, and of course now she's 15 and she's shot a deer every year. Um, my little one, she, uh, she is now 10 and I'm trying to get her on her first deer, but her patience runs a little bit thin. Uh, you know, we'll, we'll see how that, how that goes. We don't have a, a huge deer population here. So they're, they're a little more skittish than a lot of places, but that's really my goal is, you know, is just go out and enjoy getting away from it all and whatever happens, happens. And then, and then getting my, getting my kids involved. So that's it for me. Speaking of kids, we have one that is trying to sneak in behind us yeah, right now. She wants to get her cameo. Okay, well, five minutes of here. <laughs> Photo bomb. Yeah. 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 <laughs> Kendra, what are your plans this year? Uh, I want to get back into archery since I was taken out of it last year. Uh, when I got thrown from that horse, that just ended my archery season. And uh, they told me it would be a long time before I could pull a bow back again. Um, I'm pulling it back now, shooting pretty regular. So uh, I, I want to get me an archery. But my uh, friend... She's been a longtime friend since high school. She has a celiac disease. And so the best thing for her to eat is, you know, venison, a wild game. And their freezer went down. I got her some deer last year, but their freezer went down. They lost all their meat. And uh, she's never shot a buck. She shot a doe before, but she's never shot a buck or shot a turkey. So I want to focus on getting her uh, a buck this year and get her a big turkey. That's cool. I, I think back to some comments that were made and, and I look, look at our progression here. Heather and I have been together for 20 years, 20 plus forever. Careful. <laughs> careful. <laughs> but, uh, when, when we first started dating, her grandma uh, got sick and they, they offered us an opportunity to come move on the family farm. So it's a 56 acre farm. And, and, you know, of course we accepted that opportunity my deer hunting at that point really took off because there's so many deer around here and um, still small being deer. small, small deer, swamp buck deer, you get the little swamp, swamp buck racks, you get the weird racks, you get like that three point I was telling you guys about, it's got, it's got two and then just a little nub on the other side and like, that's really weird, but whatever. Um, so we went through a phase where, if we were going to shoot something, it had to be at least six points. Well, then we started shooting six pointers. So then we thought, you know, let's, let's, let's try to grow some deer here. It's got to have at least eight points. Well, then what we found was we were shooting younger eight points. <laughs> you know what I mean? So then we went to, well, they have to be at least two and a half to three year old deer, you know? And so, um, so I passed up a lot of deer the last few years, a lot of deer, a lot of nice deer in range that I passed up because I knew there were bigger deer out there. My goal is to shoot a big deer. I did that last year, you know, and so with our freezer dying, we got to put meat in the freezer. That's what yeah. we eat. And so my goal, one of my goals is just to put meat back in the freezer. And so that three point, like I said, if we're into, you know, the last part of archery season, because once, once the guns start going off, you don't see bucks or you're, yeah. you're lucky to see a buck. But if he comes out that last day of archery season, I might take a crack at him. <laughs> you know what I mean? Because that puts meat in our freezer, yeah, you that's... know? So yeah, but I will say, I think there's enough, you know, we've been good with picking the deer that we wanted to take over the, over the last few years oh, that, yeah. 
you know, we were just, I went out to take care of the horses. Was it a, two weeks ago? Two weeks ago. About yeah. two weeks ago. And it was one of those moments where I wasn't really paying attention. I just was going about doing chores. And all of a sudden I look up and I see this deer in our horse pasture that's 100 yards from our house. Not even. Yeah. Not even. And the horses are in their wood pen eating hay and this is in the grass part. And I just look and I freeze and I'm like, I, I've never, and I've grown up on this property. I've never seen a buck that big, that close to the house. And it was super tall, like a narrow one, but straight, straight up um, and way up, all in velvet. Like I can close my eyes, I can still see it. And we're really wondering if it was, there was one that. Huge, going, my number two last year. Yeah, yeah, going back, well, it was probably four years ago. Well, four years ago, we had a huge buck on property. So yeah. Tala named it Mr. Elky. And <laughs> because it looked like an elk and it was, it was a really tall rack and not super wide but mm -mm. extraordinarily tall and we're really wondering if you know yep, we so. know he's still around nobody has gotten him unless something happened over the winter um i don't know if he's been seen but there, there's so much corn up right now you can't tell you yeah. can, we can't see because yeah. in the years past there's been soybeans so we've been able to to track them there's been all the soybean fields all are corn. Area, yeah, all, all corn. Yeah. So we're excited to see, like, okay, one, did he survive? Is Mr. Elky still around? And two, like, are his offspring starting to get to the point where they might make it onto our our hit list of where we want to go? So I'm excited to, to see what deer are out there because we really, as much as we've been trying to scout, like, it's just been – it's been really hard to with the corn up and I'm excited to see what's out there. When Heather told me that story, my first thought was, man, it, it actually was paying off passing up all those little bucks. But at the same time, knowing that we need meat in the freezer, you know, I've gone years where I passed up deer, passed up deer, passed up deer. And here we are, you know, the very last day that we can shoot a buck, <laughs> you know, yeah. uh, you know, still I've had, I've had years where I hadn't put a buck down. I've shot all those because I passed so many bucks up, you know, so maybe it has paid off, but at this point, you know, we have to put meat in our freezer. And so there's um, plenty of does around, plenty It'll of does fine. around, but speaking of master management, Michael, <laughs> <laughs> yes, oh, no. Whoa. <laughs> like the Jedi manager, <laughs> well, what I, you know, I was getting distracted earlier with the kids making a bunch of noise when you yeah, we got one right here creaking the door. So yeah. <laughs> and we're talking a little bit about my daughter and you know like we don't have to kill another deer this year it was a success honestly her getting her first deer I mean uh, obviously yeah we're gonna try to get more deer don't get me wrong but like just her being able to go out there and put a great shot get it all on film it's on the house or behind the house on our home property I really wanted the kids to get their first deer here on the home farm and, you know, for that to happen, that's a big added bonus. But it was just, you know, we're talking uh, in the blind before, you know, um, about what do we want to do if a, if a doe steps out? Because, you know, she has a, a here in Michigan, if you're 10 or younger, or I think if it's nine or younger, I, there's still kind of a gray area there with me. But I know with her only being nine, she's only allowed one buck. That's it. And so... I bought her an antlerless doe tag and then the one uh, buck tag. And I told her, I said, there's been some bucks coming into the food plot, but there's always does coming in first. So if you want to wait, we can wait. And she's like, nope, the first adult deer that comes out here is getting it. And I'm like, all right. So she, she you know, she, she did her thing, made a great shot on that nice doe. We recovered her. And later that night after I had it butchered and in the cooler, she, she asked me, she said, so I still have a buck tag, right? And I said, yeah. She said, now, can we go next weekend? I said, no. Nope. <laughs> she, she got all mad and she's like, what do you mean? I'm like, dude, this is the youth weekend. You, you This was it. Like, you're gonna have to wait till November 15th with everybody else gets out there. And she was so bummed out. You know, what are you talking about? It's going to be cold. And everything I said, hey, we got the buddy heater. But so that I just wanted to share that a little bit, you know, when it came to our our goals for this year. 
because now our goals have extended from just her getting a deer to now her getting two deer, it sounds like, and getting her first buck. So, you know, we're real excited um, that the kids have been watching um, my wife and I as we've been, you know, uh, hunting together and involving the kids as much as we possibly can in the recovery of the deer, the butchering of the deer, um, everything else. And so, yeah, that's definitely number one goal for us is, you know, just keep the kids involved and, and definitely get her more involved now that she's ready to go and, and showing the willingness. Hold on a thought. I have a question. <laughs> I do too. So I'm going to ask first though. So Michael, you've shot a lot of really great bucks, you know, over the years, how did that, that, um, the deer that your daughter got, how did that compare to the bucks that you've shot and, or that you've shot over the years? Yeah, it's, that was top five hunting experience of my life there. Um, uh, watching my wife get her first one, that would be in top five, which was just a, you know, just a little spike. Mm -hmm. Even my little sister, I got a sister that's 12 years younger than me. And I can remember when she got her first deer and I, and I shot the biggest deer I had ever shot that time. I killed a 162 inch eight pointer with my bow that year. And we're just talking a tank of a deer on here. He's 285 on the hoof, two and a quarter dress. First book buck I ever shot. And I mean, you, you'd have thought I could have never got any higher than that. And it was two weeks later, she shot her first deer and I'm just like, wow, that just, you know, so yeah, the big bucks I've shot have, you know, they'll always hold a memory in my brain. I can always go back and watch that arrow or that bullet go off, whatever, you know, I can always replay those, but you know, when you're with someone else too, and you get to enjoy it with someone else and you get the high five and the hug and, you know, mm -hmm. I know you got to do that last year, Todd. Sounds yeah. like Chen has done that with family members. I'm sure Kendra has with her, with her family members. And so, um, I'm just now getting to experience it with my own kids, but yeah, that's, that was top five hunt of my life. And all it was, was a dope. So that yeah. just tells you how special it was. I always say that was like one of the greatest moments. I mean, more, more so than even the, the deer I shot, like I said, it was awesome to get that huge buck, but that was, that was, that's something that's always going to live with me. Not that I'm, I'm going to forget the deer, the huge deer I shot last year, but that was, and we got it on video and everything just worked out perfectly. So my question was this, we have young kids, Michael, you have young kids, Chad, you have young ish kids, right? They're teenagers. I know Kendra has a bouncing baby boy at home. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> he's youngish, right? Yeah. Like how youngish? Oh, he's like 32. There you go. He's young. <laughs> he's a young guy. But I, but I got a granddaughter, so. Oh, yeah. There you go. I was going to say, what's your memory of Ethan's first? You had to have been there, right? Oh, yeah. He was he was six years old. We we used to sit in the, in the we built a box blind that was, uh, oh, probably about 10 foot off the ground. Foot, you know, and, um. Uh, we would sit in that blind and watch for deer and we got to playing a game. You ever heard of a punch bug? Like you see the Volkswagens going down the oh, road. Yeah, yeah, yeah. At first. Okay. We would do that on bucks. So whoever saw the buck, if you caught it first, you punched the other one in the arm. <laughs> so we were doing that. <laughs> but uh, yeah, I remember him six years old, shooting a little single shot youth rifle. It was a 223 with a 64 grain hollow point. He took him a doe. It was awesome. 26, 26 years later and she can tell you the grain weight on the ammunition <laughs> you top five i think so yeah, yeah. yeah. you too chad yeah uh you know i've been fortunate enough my largest buck to date was a 233 that i shot in 2018 and the amount of freaking out that i did to <laughs> have an opportunity at a deer like that was was hard to pass but my daughter when she was 10 um she shot her first deer and i mean it was laughing crying like all the emotions i mean really it took me back to when i shot my first deer when i was 10 and um you know and so it it just took me back to reliving that moment and knowing exactly like what she felt and how proud she 
felt at that moment of, you know, how gratifying it was. And, um, you know, and it was just a little like dink deer, but you know, that's what I shot when I was in, I couldn't have been more proud of it. And so the same deal, I had it all on film and, you know, she breaks down, starts crying. And I'm at first I'm thinking, is she crying because she sat for the deer that she shot the deer? And then, <laughs> then I realized it was just out of joy. And I could tell just like how proud she was that I was proud of her. You know, it was just, it was a, it was a bonding moment, you know, with a, a child that is just, you can't, um, I mean, you can't repeat that, you know what I mean? And it's, and especially for hunters, because a lot of people don't relate to our lifestyle, you know? And so, you know, for me to have a daughter that got a passion and, and enjoys it as much as I do was, you know, that much more satisfying for me, but yeah, it's, uh, we've got it, we've got it mounted and, uh, you know, a little European mount in a room. And, and of course she's my good luck charm. She like to say my little one, she hasn't started hunting yet. She's gone one time. Uh, she thought the grunt call was too funny to uh to sit there and listen to that um she's real impatient so we're working on her but yeah my oldest she has so since then she's killed a buck every year and four of those five years she's killed a buck on the very first sit and oh, i'm wow. like how does this even happen i'm like spending hundreds of hours of course, <laughs> granted, I'm, i i am being a little more specific on a certain deer i'm trying to shoot but it's just it's unbelievable like she'll have deer just walk right out in front of her. I'm like, there hadn't been a deer in weeks, you know? And so um, she's my little good luck charm, but yeah, it's, it's definitely a special moment for sure. What Chad, what's her favorite way to hunt? Is it archery or is it gun or both? What is, what does so, it matter? Uh, so she doesn't, um, she's not able to, you know, she's trying to pull back a bow. Uh, you know, for us, we have to have a minimum 40 pound draw here. Um, and so we have a, um, the county that I hunt in, um, mostly here, which is Collin County, is archery only, and so she can't uh, bow hunt um, just because, like, she's not able to draw back a bow. And plus, you know, until she's comfortable with it, I don't want her. The worst thing that could happen is put her in that situation and she wound a deer. You know, so uh, right now um, we have instead of you know a lot of people crossbow hunt or let their kids crossbow hunt, but I've got um, what's called a Benjamin Airbow. And they legalized them back in 2019 here. And um, so it just looks like a gun. It's like just basically compressed air and it, and it shoots an arrow out of it, but it looks like a gun. Um, you've probably seen some of them, but um, anyway, so that's what she shoots, but she can't start hunting until general season, which is the first week of November for us. Okay. And so, um, but then other places we've gone like to San Saba, you know, um, you know, uh, Oklahoma, other places like that, she can, she can start hunting sooner with a, with a crossbow or air bow there. But yeah, so her goal right now is to get one with a bow, uh, cause she's gotten one with a gun. She's gotten one with, um, you know, with the air bow and, uh, she's wanting to do it archery, but I just, I just want to make sure she's ready. You know what I mean? So uh, how far effective range on the air on the uh, air crossbow gun thing you're talking about. Oh, it, yeah, it, I want to hear more about this because <laughs> this is new to me. Oh, it is. So, so it's pneumatic. Like you just is. I have like a bicycle pump that pumps it up to three thousand psi. It shoots a full size <laughs> arrow at like four hundred and fifty five feet per second. Oh, she's, um, she's got a PSA with it. <laughs> oh yeah it sounds like a it sounds like a 22 going off and so yeah. um um and it's got a it's got a scope that's already pre-measured for the the arrow drop oh. and um and and yeah so i mean i shoot at 80 to 100 yards and can shoot in a quarter wow yeah, I mean it's it's unbelievable. I mean, obviously with no wind or anything like that, but it, it's unbelievable how accurate it is um, because it, oh. it 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 has a tube on it that you slide the shaft of the. It's like having a hollow shaft arrow. Uh, and you slide it over so the air instead of pushing from the back end, which can cause a lot of flex in the, the arrow, it, it actually pushes from the field tip, so it's much straighter and accurate. And it's 
it, the thing is on a rope. It's it's pretty amazing. Um, I've actually shot a deer with it, and I mean, it's not even fair. You know what I mean? Like you might as well just be shooting them with a rifle. It's uh, it it's it's insane. So how quick can you reload? So it's uh, it's like a BB gun. It has like a little um, cock, uh, handle, like a little cock handle on the on the stock, yeah. and it's literally like four inches. You break it over, and it reloads the compressed air. And you can shoot eight times before that three thousand psi starts to drop. That was my next question: How long the air lasted? Yeah, That's cool. yeah. It's uh, so I hunt pigs with it a lot. I've got night vision uh, goggles. And I put a, <laughs> put a laser. Sign me up. <laughs> yeah. So I, so I put a laser on the crossbow. So I don't have to raise it up, look through the scope. I just put the laser on it with the knife and just ear hole them. And it's, uh, it's a lot of fun. That sounds But we got a hog problem here, too. So it's, y'all definitely have to come down and do it. It's, it's fun. Uh, that would, I wonder if you could use them bow fishing. Ooh. Oh, uh, we need to talk to the lady. I mean, it, 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 would have, it would have to have a line on it, but you know, there, there's no way. Let's no get something. let's get a patent on one with a a, a line on it. <laughs> I'm sure you would lose every arrow because <laughs> it, it's insane. It's insane how powerful it is. Yeah, that's shooting way too fast to shoot. A yeah, they with. came out. They came out like in 2000. I don't know, 16, 17. Jim Shockey was promoting them a whole lot when they first come out and killing like Will the Beast and stuff with them. Um, yeah. they're, they're, they're pretty crazy. But uh, now, like, um, there's a lot of air rifle companies that make that make them that shoot uh, arrows. Hmm. Yeah. Well, I used to go and we would dart cattle a lot. So it works the same as a dart gun that we, you know, yeah. dart cattle with. Just bigger dart. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. Yeah, that might have helped you on the horse, Kendra. Yeah, I have. <laughs> I would like to put the dart in the horse instead of the bull. <laughs> yeah. So it sounds like all of us got new equipment this year. Because didn't you no, get a new bull, still, Kendra? No, I'm still looking. I, I've narrowed it down to it's either Matthews or an elite. So I, I got to pick. Which I've always been a, I've got a Matthews. I've been hunting with that thing for thirty years. It's old, but it's still. I mean, if it's not broke, don't fix it. <laughs> it still works. That's but where got, I, I'm with my. Um, we had tuned down my Hoyt um, for which I Tala. I adore. I love my Hoyt, and I tuned it down for for Tala. And I said to him not too long ago, I go, I want my bow back. Like, yeah. we need, I go, I'm just comfortable with it. I go, we, yeah. so when we, before, what, we've had it since before kid, oh, or I've yeah. had it since oh, before kid. That was her first bow. Yeah, yeah. it's my, really my only bow. Yeah. And um, we went on 3D archery, you know, tournaments. I mean, not to like, not like we were ever going to win anything, but just like that was what we did for vacation. And we'd go camping and then we'd go on a 3D archery as our entertainment. And so that's where I learned to shoot it. And I'm super comfortable with that, the yeah. my boy. And it's, it's a, it's a youth bow, but it can shoot 50 pounds, which I'm comfortable with. And, but it's short. And so I feel really comfortable in a tree and I can move and, I just said to him, I go, I need that. I need my bow back. Like <laughs> Piper can get, or Tala can get whichever kid, whichever one's hunting, they yeah. can get their own bow, but I need, mom needs her own bow back. Tala, yeah. Tala has fallen in love with the crossbow since she yeah. shot that deer last year. And you, you talked earlier about your daughter, Michael, how she wants to go out and get more deer. My daughter last year, she shot that buck. She was good for the rest of the year. Oh, <laughs> yeah. yeah. We tried to get her out several times. She's like, I already got my deer. And it's bigger than mom ever shot. So she's a trash talker it's and that's our fault it's, yeah. it's my fault but yeah she um we actually she didn't she knows that the corn's up she's super observant and mm -hmm. so she's like last week she's like no i'm good i don't yeah, need to go because yeah. the blind that we would have taken her out to she doesn't like so for early doe season i said hey what if you and i went into what if we um, went into the lane and sat back in the autumn olives and 
looked for one coming down the lane where we mowed and she go, cause they walk that lane all the time. They're not never the big ones, but it would be a doe or it'd be a young one. I go, what if we, what if we did that? And, and looked for a doe to come down there. And she's like, I don't have to go in that blind. I go, you don't have to go in the blind. We can just sit there. And she's like, I think I'm in for that. So I think we will get her out for this weekend. For this weekend. Michael, what'd you upgrade to? Yeah. So I bought a, Matthews V3X. Yes. Um, nice. Yes, I I like it a lot. the The selling point for me was I'm always trying to shoot more pounds, and the old bow that I had been shooting, I'd been shooting a mission, and uh, the local archery shop, the guys twisting the strings to get me more poundage and to get me about seventy four pounds is about the most he could get me. But then the problem was as the year would go on and as I'm shooting, I would lose poundage. And there was years where I'd start out at 74 and, you know, let's say in August and by January, I'm at 69 and my sight tapes way off and I'm having to add yardage, especially you get a little bit further down range and it's just annoying. And so these newer Matthews, I don't know about all the other brands, but these, uh, newer like the last two or three years now the matthews are offering a 75 pound module straight out of the box so that's why i went with this one and actually it's shooting 79 pounds so a little bit more than i thought it was going to be shooting but i mean i i just wanted to shoot more more poundage so this off season i was doing all kinds of experimentation with arrows and and just trying to get more penetration because I I, I haven't had an arrow pass through in years now. And so I, I, I started looking at how I could increase that. And I think I got a hold of you, Michael, and said, what do I need to do? And I got a hold of Nick and I got a hold of Sam. And and mm -hmm. what I settled on was um, um, a Black Black Eagle, the uh, deep impact arrow, which is all front loaded. Mm -hmm. And so when that sucker hits a target, it, you can hear it, it just pops. You know what I mean? You can hear it in the house. <laughs> And so I did, an experiment. I, 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 I did an experiment one day. I used to shoot outlaws, Black Eagle outlaws, and then I had mm -hmm. uh, some Black Eagle Spartans, and then I had the impact. And the impact, I was blowing through my foam target, whereas the outlaws were sticking out about halfway. The Spartans wow. were about a quarter, and the, the deep impacts were blowing through the target. And so, mm -hmm. and then I ended up um, getting an elite Omnia this year, too. And I wanted to go more poundage. So, I, so last year, because Tala took Heather's bow, I gave her my elite, so she was she was shooting the the, the elite, ember the ember last year, and so I I turned my target bow, which was a new breed, which I don't even know if they're in business anymore. I don't think they are. But um, I took that and turned it into my hunting bow and set it up, cranked the poundage up to its max, which was sixty pounds, and shot that all season. And then, but you weren't so happy. I wasn't happy because I still didn't get pass through. So I thought, you know what, first thing I'm gonna do is. When I get this elite, I'm going to crank it up to 65 pounds. So it's max. So it's supposed to be go up to 60 pounds. When I got that sucker out of the box. I'm like, yeah, 65 pounds. Oh, my gosh. <laughs> <laughs> my heat just got up to me. What's going on? Everything's popping. Pop, 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 pop. I'm like, oh, okay, got it. <laughs> well, then I took it to the pro shop and it was set at like 68 pounds. I'm like, oh, okay. So... <laughs> That explains it, but I get it down to 64 now, and so that that thing shoots really nice. It was so easy to get tuned in, so um, really well, happy with it. Excited to get out there. Well, and the nice thing is, I mean, I it's not that I didn't like the Ember; it just was a little bit too big for me, and to be able to give him that one back, so now he's got both of he's got you know his Omni, and then he's got his backup for him, and then I can I don't go out enough archery season to to necessarily need a backup bow. Um, I'm good with with what I've got, or worst case is I take the crossbow out because mm -hmm. as soon as it gets cold out, I I can't pull my bow back. I as soon as I start getting the extra clothes on, it's just it's it's too hard for me to to pull it back and I just get frustrated and I don't want to drop my poundage any because I love how my bow shoots at the weight at, you know, at 50. So, um, yeah, I'm excited about this season. It's, I think we're finally all in the, yeah. the equipment in the selling household where uh -huh. we're happiest. And, um, what are your thoughts on backup bows? You guys have backup bows? Yes, I've been I've been keeping mine dialed in. My I got one when I worked at uh, Cabela's. They gave me when I was an archery outfitter. It's a 
it's a bow tech form, but it's a Cabela's instinct. I love shooting it. I can, I mean, it groups in a quarter every time I shoot, but uh, I shoot those deep six injection arrows with it. And it's so hard to find broadheads for those, which they make an insert now that you can uh, use different broadheads instead of the deep six broadheads. But I was trying to find, um, I like fixed blades, like the old uh, Magnus Stingers, but you can't find those to fit an injection arrow. So I looked around and I found some kudus and I wanted a single bevel because they'll break bone when they go in and twist. And uh, so I'm getting ready to try those out. But the lowest grain I could find in them was a uh, hundred. And with those injection arrows, I shoot a 85 grain. But in my Matthews, I shoot a hundred grain. But they both kind of shoot the same. I can play around with it and see what happens. Yeah, you gonna back up, Chad? I do. Uh, so my backup is my original bow. It's an old Matthews black max yeah i mean we're talking way back like <laughs> and um, yeah and so uh i still have that one as a backup but i've been shooting um yeah, since 2010 probably um the uh z matthew z7 extreme um and you know i'm actually a pro staff for shields and they offer me 50% off and they're like, come in and get a new bow. And I'm kind of in the same boat. I'm like, if it's not broke, you know, because, <laughs> you know, still I'm looking at, you know, same deal. I was like, do I switch over and maybe look at a Hoyt, you know, and just a bare bow is $1,800. Yeah. Even if I'm getting it for half nice. off, I'm still, by the time I add the quiver and stabilizers and get it all fitted out. You know, I'm dropping two grand easy on this easy. thing. And easy. I'm like, I don't need it. It's a, it's a want, you know what I mean? Cause they are slick. It's a, uh, it's just a hard pill for me to swallow. So, um, so I'm, I'm going to, I'm going to at least give it through this year with the one I have now. And then kind of my plan is I'll then give that one to my daughter cause I can crank it down give that one to my daughter and then I'll get a, a new one next year more than likely. So. Yeah. And Michael, you have one because obviously you just got a brand new one. So your old one is probably your backup, right? Well, actually I, I just sold the old one. No, um, it's wow. been about three years now that I haven't had a backup. I used to always have a backup because of going out West, I would have two bows completely set up, ready to rock and roll. And then I would take them both out because I was always afraid you know, if I slip and trip and fall down the mountain and, and, you know, screw up your bow, your X amount of miles from anybody, you know, so then I could just grab another bow and go. But no, the last few years, I haven't had a backup uh, bow anymore. So uh, hopefully it doesn't turn, you know, around and bite me in the butt. Um, I mean, I got, I got the recurve, but we ain't shooting far with that. So. <laughs> a dart gun. Yeah, I might as well throw a dart gun out there, but um no, I also wanted to ask you, Todd, did you get a chance to, when you went to the local archery shop, weigh your arrows after you got these new arrows? I did not. No, I didn't. I didn't weigh my arrows. So, um, I know go, ahead. go ahead. Sorry. I was just going to say, because of your penetration issues, you, you were expressing to me last year and then beginning of this year, I remember you even talking about in the snow goose hunt and, uh, I just was curious because I noticed a big difference once I went over 400 grains because I used to be a speed guy and be at like 380 right. Right. and get as fast as I could. And then once I got, I bumped up over four. Now I'm at like just under 430 and I'm still kind of playing with that, but I get great penetration. Yeah. So I, it's, it's kind of odd hearing you say you're getting bad penetration. I know you're not shooting as high a poundage but right and so what i found was that the outlaws were a light arrow and and the reason why i say that um the deep impacts have an uh, have an outsert instead of an insert you know, mm -hmm. you know what i mean and so it's really heavy if you were to put it on your finger and try to balance it off it would definitely be forward you know what i mean and so what what i realized with my omnia is i got it tuned into my deep impact so i'm hitting perfectly in the same you know same spot when i shoot my outlaw it's about that Sorry, gotta get on camera. About that <laughs> that much higher than where my 
than where my deep impacts are. So that tells me that's a lighter arrow. And so I thought that that had a lot to do with the fact that because it's light, it doesn't carry as much kinetic energy just because the mass is different. You know what I mean? And so if we have more mass, then we can get deeper penetration. And that's what I found when I was doing my testing. And, and the Spartans were the next closest, the Black Eagle Spartans. So those are my back, sorry, I'm off camera, backup arrows again. Yeah. And so, um, so that's kind of what I'm using, but I, I, I didn't measure it. Um, I didn't wait. That'd be I, really interesting to go. It with. would be absolutely. I should, I should take it down. I know that I usually shoot hundred grain, um, broadheads, uh, just because mm -hmm. they seem to fly exactly. I shoot hundred grain field tips when I'm practicing. So when I put hundred grain broadheads on there, it's, it's, it's perfect. I have no deviation between my, my practice arrows versus my, my field arrows, you know? Yeah. And so. I'm excited to get out there. The reason why I brought up the backup bow thing was because Heather and I went out and visited Tyler Wolf and we went fishing with him in Lake Taney Como this summer. And um, one of the stories he told us was that, yeah, I have my bow was set up perfectly. I took it out. I used my bow for turkey season and I used these new broadheads, the decapitator, which yeah. are, you guys have seen those, right? It's got the, yeah. where it's way out, you know? I think that's I think that's what Andy used when he decapitated his turkey. It's actually on our on the fall session website if you guys go look at videos. But at any rate, um, he said he was taking it off after a hunt and he pulled back. He, he took it off the string and without clearing it, he just pulled back and ended up slicing his string. Oh. <laughs> and so he was like, "Yep, my turkey season was done." And at that time, so this was in July. So turkey season was April May ish. Yeah. This was in July. He said it hadn't, he hadn't, hadn't gotten it back from the, the pro shop yet. So my thought was, what if something like that happens when you're in the field during deer season? Do you have a quick fix or are you going to have to sit around and wait for the pro shop to fix it? You know what I mean? You would lose your mind. I would absolutely lose and my I, mind. He yeah. will always have a backup because I'm not living with him. <laughs> if he can't, like archery is his favorite. And if he can't archery hunt, I might as well move out because he is going to be absolutely a bear to live with. So, <laughs> you know, and that, that brings up a good point. Cause I, I think that happens more times than people realize is, you know, you take an arrow out of the quiver and you know, you go to load that in. Well, oh, yeah. if you've got fixed blades on there, you know, some of these things are razor sharp and all the tension that's already on that string. I don't know how many people, I know that have had a similar situation where they're like, man, I just nicked my string and it just popped and it was over. And so, yeah, then you're trying to get it restrung and then you got to reside it all back in. And, um, you know, it's, so I'm, I'm with you. It's I, I'm very careful uh, with mine just because I've heard so many stories of that. And like taking it off when you're at, when you go, go back in at night after the hunt's over, a lot of times you're doing it in the dark. And so, mm -hmm. yes, you're very careful, but still, sometimes you, you lose your orientation in the dark. And yeah, it's, yeah, it's crazy. So I always love to have a backup. And so just for that reason, just like now I have backup arrows. So yeah, we'll see. <laughs> well, yeah. that's another reason I'm glad I shoot uh, mechanical. Yeah, I do too. <laughs> yeah. I do too, actually. I got the uh, slick trick. The uh, Actually, I have the um the assassin slick trick assassin so you have two flicks fixed blade then you have two mechanical blades so i believe it's like two and an eighth inch uh, cutting diameter so um i've always gotten good blood trails with slick tricks so i'm ha I'm happy with the slick tricks and i love shooting those so um we've been talking about deer hunting any other hunts we got coming up any other goals for other hunt hunts yeah that yeah. We want we want you to come back to Georgia so we can kill another turkey, team up, you know, win a competition. <laughs> <laughs> because we need more beards destroyed. <laughs> so, oh, this is my turkey from the competition. Oh, I was that him. Yeah, that's him. I had him caped out. That's the biggest bird I've ever killed. Oh, oh okay. That's why we won. That's right. <laughs> yeah, it's the prize you won shooting a beard off. <laughs> Oh, wow. it, it's funny. He walks up there and he goes, Did I shoot his beard off? And I was like, I see it laying in the mud hole. <laughs> oh, yeah, well, had a beard, I swear. And we're like, Here it is. So we pieced it together to measure it. But there was a still shot that you took right yeah. at the moment of impact. And you see the right. bird back, and all you see is the beard. <laughs> I know. <It> explodes. 
we actually have a video on that too so hopefully that'll come out at yeah. some point yeah so yeah. we have it right now um, at the state park that i'm at there is a group of eight toms and they have these big old beards that are like dragging on the ground and they disappear all summer until it's getting close to um turkey season and then they yeah. come out and they hang out right at our headquarters and it, like i said it's all toms and then right after turkey season they disappear again <laughs> and it's it's crazy i was like you guys are really smart like you are safe you know i mean they just stay right in our right in the front area there's no hunting in our park so they know they're good yeah. It's, uh, but I haven't seen the turkeys out around us like we normally do. Well, we haven't because the corn's up. I mean, once, once That's the corn's down, I mean, last year I was seeing flocks of 50 with half That's of them, true. half of them are towns. But then I get out there during turkey season and I get one. <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah. I, I see flocks of 50 turkeys during tur deer season with a couple deer here and there. And then during turkey season, I see 50 flocks, of, you know, 50, yeah. <laughs> 50 deer out in the field with one turkey. <laughs> so but that was awesome because that that turkey i shot that's what we use for our meat we we're headed down to spring break and we stopped and visited kendra yeah. and that's what we use for our meat for the week so that was really it was cool. awesome we got yeah. some carolina barbecue sauce and cooked yeah. it up oh so good yeah yeah, yeah. so how about uh, michael and chad you guys get any other hunts going on? i know chad you just had some dove dove hunting going on right yeah, it was slow. Like I said, we've been in a drought all uh, so the so the dove numbers for Texas is actually up by like forty percent. So and then late kind of late spring, man, there was dove all around my house. And then we hit like a two and a half month drought and I hadn't seen nothing. So I shot ten dove the other day and a couple with my daughter. And I mean, and that took like all day long. Um, I mean it was just driving around trying to find some i mean it was it was just it was bad um you know down south texas i mean you can warp your barrel every year down there it's just you know they just migrate differently but here in north texas it's it was pretty rough for us so um yeah no other than that um i, I shoot a lot of pigs um you know i'll eat some of them but really they're a nuisance here so most of the time it's the big boars or the big sows because you know they'll they'll have a ton um, of pigs a year. And, um, and, and so they're, they multiply like rabbits and they'll destroy oh. all your feeders, your food plots. They run all the deer off. So, um, so I do, a, I do a lot of thermal hunting and not vision hunting for, for pigs, just trying to thin them out, but they just come in <laughs> waves. What about Gila hog hunting? I've done that. Uh, I've you done you it need with to get a Gila for us. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I've done it with a shotgun. Like, I've done it with AR platforms, and uh, shotguns is is cool, but you're much closer, right? Um, so the helicopter is much closer to the ground. A uh, little more nerve wracking uh, that way, but um, but if you ever get the chance to do it, y'all oh, got to do it. It it is. I want to do that. That's one of the one of my bucket lists. That's a bucket uh, list. Top, right? Tops yeah. the bucket list. Yeah. Yeah, it's it's. It's amazing. Um, yeah, I, I did one um, on the Oklahoma side uh, a few years back, and it was shotgun because they didn't allow AR platforms um, in Oklahoma um, for aerial hunting. And so, anyway, we uh, we go through, and, and uh, it was an old Apache helicopter pilot that oh. this dude was getting down, like, in the Red River banks and <laughs> just, like, banking off. It's more like a it was more like an amusement ride than anything. Um, and uh, anyway, he, I mean, he's next to these huge cottonwood trees, like going through the banks and I'm looking out and the propeller is gotta be like a foot away from these <laughs> massive 200 year old trees. And it's freaking me out to where I can't even like pay attention. I'm like, dude, we're going to die today. <laughs> and, uh, you know, and this guy's getting a kick out of like turn around looking at us and I'm like, just watch where you're going, man. And, yeah, uh, just fly. Yeah. Just fly. <laughs> yeah. So, and so anyway, he would get these pigs. Yeah, he'd get yeah. these pigs pushed out of the brush, and he would just kind of fan back and forth over the brush, and it would eventually push them out into these open fields. And then, um, you know, I had there was other gunners, so I'd be on the side, and you're like sitting on the deck of the helicopter, and your feet is on the landing gear, so you're basically strapped in, but you're sitting halfway out of the helicopter. Uh -huh. And so anyway, he would. Uh, push these pigs out in these open fields which gets them running out a long ways 
and they're in a huge group. And so he just comes in, he's like coming up on the right side and he basically just power slides. He kicks the whole thing sideways. So you're flying sideways, but like I'm facing right at him. And I mean, we're shooting them like point blank. I mean, we're like six feet off the ground and it's just, it's, uh, let me, oh, let me tell you this. I pants, huh? it on video yeah. and I couldn't post it without getting banned. <laughs> oh. It was, uh, it was pretty intense. Yeah. But yeah, if y'all ever if y'all ever do it, you gotta you gotta take the opportunity. It's it's awesome. For sure. Michael, you? Yeah, so like we were talking about right before we hit record uh tonight, I, I was able to get a mule deer archery tag for Colorado. So a week from the time that we're recording this, so the end of September, I will be on the way out to Colorado to finish up the last eight, nine days of season there with archery for mule deer in the mountains. So really, yeah, really looking forward to that. Um, so where did you I, say I, you're going I, for that? Wh what'd you say? Where'd you say you're going for that? Colorado. West? Colorado. Okay. Yep. Colorado. So, um, done this hunt twice before with archery and, um, last time was in 21. And so need some redemption had, uh, had an epic slash, failure of a hunt back then in 21 and so i've been chomping at the bits to get back out there and so really looking forward to that the wife and kids are going to be able to come along but oh, that's awesome. the, yeah they're coming along with me so that was that was big in 21 they did not come with me and that was not that wasn't good for my psyche yeah. um kids calling crying we miss you when you're coming home and it's like man i'm focused on something here getting pulled two different directions and um, I'm not going to blame that on my failures, but um, your kids help. are powerful. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. It, it, it didn't help. And I told myself, if I ever come back for this hunt, they're coming with. And so we're, we're all going out super excited about that. They, uh, my wife has family out there in Denver, so she's going to be able to see them for hopefully a few different times while we're out there. Um, but outside of that, there's no, non deer hunting that we've got planned for uh this fall it's all just gonna be whitetail got a return trip to colorado with sam and tim uh after thanksgiving where i'll be whitetail hunting sam will be mule deer and then i think tim is mule deer or whitetail i'm the only one limited there in that hunt um but yeah everything else is just here in the midwest chasing whitetail like we love to do gotcha so December is a busy month for me. I'm, I'm meeting up with Kess, Kess Fisher from Indiana there. Mm -hmm. And we're headed out to North Carolina to do some um, black bear hunting. So we're going to, we're going to head down there. Uh, I believe the 18th, 19th, 20th, somewhere in that range uh, to do a three day hunt. Um, and it, actually this is one of the ideas that came out of one of our, one of our excursions, one of our camps that we had and um, talked about doing no the original uh, snow goose hunt. The original snow goose hunt was doing North Carolina black bear. And the reason why is because North Carolina, the black bear don't hibernate. So they, they eat all year long. So they're oh, a lot wow. bigger than the normal up here in Michigan, up, you know, in Canada. Um, you know, they can get big, but they hibernate as well. So the average, average weight is around 400 pounds. So that's going to be really cool to, to go see. Um, it's actually a combo hunt where I can shoot, we can shoot uh, one black bear and six deer. So, I mean, if we max out, we might have to run a U-Haul to get it home. <laughs> <laughs> so, and I spoke to the guy that, that that's going to guide us. He said that it's actually a deer hunt, but the bonus tag is the black bear. So, you're actually buying a deer tag with the bonus for black bear. So, but they're advertising it as a black bear, and that's really what, you know, we can, we can shoot black bear here in Michigan. It's really hard in some areas, you know, some areas it might take 10 years to draw a tag because it's on a lottery system. You go into Canada, it's over the counter. You just you can go to any Walmart and buy a black bear tag over the counter. But in Canada, you have to go with a guide, which means that if I were to go to your house, Michael, for example, you say, Hey, if you were to say, Hey, Ty, let's go deer hunting. I just go to your house and we go out deer hunting. Yeah. But in Canada, you have to be a guide. So if Michael were living in Canada and say, hey, Todd, come on out to my house. We'll go hunting. He has to actually be a certified guide in order to do that with me. And so mm -hmm. it's kind of crazy. So, um, so anyway. Always, you can always come to Georgia. We got a lot of black bear here, too. 
Oh, do you really? Yeah. Well, I'll, I'll go with you, black bear hunting in Georgia. <laughs> All right. There was a, 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 a mama bear and two cubs beside my house the other day. Oh, really? Yeah. Just right out in the field. We have, um, so my dad has property up in about an hour and a, hour and a half from us. And it's um, one of the most densely populated black bear um, areas in uh, Michigan and Baldwin. And we'll probably have to wait 10 years. That's the area. Before, 10 years to draw yeah. a tag. Yeah. And yeah. they're up there. We'll see them up there, but mm -hmm. we can't. We're so far out from getting a tag. Yeah. 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 All you gotta do sure. is have a big game, big game license. To they're kind of a nuisance here. Oh, really? Yeah, all during deer season, you can you can shoot black bear. What's the average size of one there? Uh, a friend of mine shot one that was a little over four hundred pounds last year. Hmm. Uh, there's some pretty good. Yeah, that's exactly what I was gonna say. Yeah. Yeah, Ethan gets them on his trail cameras all the time on the mountain that we hunt. Uh, there, a few years ago, they people started, you know, kind of seeing them. And uh, now, whenever you're going to scout for deer sign, you see lots of bear sign. You'll see logs rolled over, rocks rolled over, you know, claw marks on the trees and stuff. But a lot of people are getting them on their trail cameras. Hmm. Interesting. We did have one on our property a couple years ago that uh, I remember my neighbor was driving by and called me when I was out in my stand. He, hey, are you out? I said, yep, I'm in my stand right now. I'm like, dude, I just went by your your house and there was a black bear at the bottom of our, your driveway. He said, it was probably <laughs> about a 300 pound black bear. I'm like, really? Yeah. <laughs> like, And that was like 15 minutes after I had gone through there and our driveway kind of winds that I, I went went down. I said to Heather, I go, man, if I would have came around that corner and saw that black bear, you probably would have heard me screaming like one of the kids. <laughs> 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 yeah, because I would not have had expected that. But no. they're they're in our area, but it's very very. Actually, I haven't even heard of any in the last couple of years. There was there was a span where um, there was multiple sightings of them a year, but there's nothing. There hasn't been anything in the last couple of years. We had our school shut down. They went into lockdown one year because there was a black bear in the playground. <laughs> Hundred fifty pound male. <laughs> yeah. So on the swing set. Yeah. <laughs> but a week after we get back from that hunt then heather and i are going down to texas for the crane hunt again again this year so we're looking forward to that um and getting some that crane meat i tell you that crane meat is like nothing else you heard it's like that goose camp right oh yeah it was good uh-huh <laughs> <laughs> really good i mean it's yeah we're fight. in fact there were a couple of times i'm like heather I'm, I'm pulling some crane out for dinner she's like oh no we're saving that for special. I'm like, <laughs> come on. <laughs> good I also knew I wouldn't have time to cook it properly. So, <laughs> so it's well, really good stuff. And then we have the goose hunt, of course, in March. So uh, we'll be out in Missouri for that again. So hoping to do some pheasant and grouse hunting this year too. Yeah, yeah, for sure. Get our get our puppy out there and uh, get around some birds. So, you know, in Michigan here, and, and again, Michael can can probably back us up on this. You know, originally when I started hunting the property, like I said, we've been been together for 20 years. And from the get-go, Grandma has always allowed me. And she said, hey, you know, you have the run of the place. You know, go out and hunt. Go do what you want. And when I would walk out, I would run into all kinds of pheasants. A lot, you know, heading out across the property. And nothing. Nothing. No, nothing. I used to try to sneak up on pheasants and try to smoke them, you know. But I haven't. The last pheasant I saw was probably in 2006 on the property, and I and I and I say that because we just built our house at that point, and there was a pheasant out here during during season, and I remember Heather was in the shower. I'm like, Heather, there's a pheasant in the front yard. Should I shoot it? She's like, Uh, yeah, you got a license. Uh, well, I I'm said, like, I yeah. is it in season? He's like, Yes, and that that was the last one. That was the last one. That was the last one. That was the last, one. Was the last, one. The last one. And then we found out it was a neighbor's pet. So. Oh. <laughs> 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 it wasn't their pet it was a wild pheasant okay but it was a wild pheasant it they had fed come in their yard. yard often <laughs> whoopsie it tasted good it was good it was good yeah. So. yeah that's like down here in you know i'm in michigan now but i'm actually from northern indiana and just moved into michigan just over three years ago and i'm only five miles from indiana so yeah. a lot of times I'll say Southern Michigan, just because I'm so far down here, 
I mean, we spend 90% of our time in Indiana. And, um, yeah, that's like what you said, 20-some years ago, early 2000s, uh, mm-hmm. we had pheasants around, even some quail up until probably 2010, 13. I even had run into some Bob White quail. Um, but, yeah, last, like, I have one spot you know about, Todd, down there um, uh, closer to Fort Wayne, Indiana, where you've leased that I've act, that's the most recent I've seen or heard any pheasant. And that would have been the last time would have been three years ago, but that's the only place every other place I've seen or heard any pheasant has probably been 10 to 20 years now. And I, I attribute it to farmers cutting more tree rows yep. out for irrigation yep. pivots. Yeah. Um, agricultural practices. Yeah. That's a, yeah. yeah I've read that too. I, mean, yeah. I think, Predation. Predation is another part of it. I mean, we've been, we've been predation, but it's actually from from cats. Yeah. Yeah. So they said yeah. cats are like the number one predator of pheasant and quail because they'll hunt all day, every day. Where mm-hmm. you know people were blaming coyotes and fox. Well, they don't. They just hunt for a small window. They're not out all day long like like these uh, farm cats are. Yeah, mm, that makes sense. So, um, but you know, with the depletion of the pheasants, when we had the pheasants, we didn't have the turkeys. And so now that the pheasants have gone, the turkeys have really, really grown quite a bit here, you know, so yeah, it's give or take. It's, it's, it's nature, nature as it runs, you know? Yeah. Well, we are about an hour in, aren't we guys? (laughs) (laughs) We've covered a ton of topics and um i look forward to definitely getting together with you guys again um because we, we barely even scratched the surface like we, we gotta do this in person at some point <laughs> <laughs> yeah <laughs> um but thank you everyone for joining us tonight on our our little virtual couch chat as we talked about the upcoming season some of our favorite memories as well as some of the the other goals that we have this season so any last thoughts before we head off for the night? Just wanted to say good luck to everybody this season. Yes. Excited to yeah. see how y'all seasons pan out. For sure. So yeah. one thing I've always thought about in fall of session, I'd love to see like audience, people that watch us, give us feedback. How are they doing? You know, how, how are your seasons going? That, that would be cool to see too. So other than that, just, just shoot straight and stay safe, right? Right. Yeah, good I luck to that, everybody. Yeah. What was that, Michael? I just gonna say what Chad said. Yeah, good luck to everybody. Um, you know, I'm like Todd said the other day in the meeting, hopefully this year we can string together, you know, twenty days again or whatever we had last year of uh back to backs on uh, deer being harvested here of the with the, the crew. That was some yeah. epic, you know, and so that was insane. That yeah. was so cool. And we've got we added some new members this year to to the crew, you know, like Chad. And yep. uh, you know, I feel really confident that this is, you know, knock on wood, this is gonna be one of, if not the the most epic seasons that Fall Obsession puts out there for everybody. And, you know, I know it's gonna be our funnest season, whether it's measured in inches of antlers or just in memories. Yep. That's and, so well said. And, 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 you know, for those people that are watching, make sure you check out all of our series. Check out the website. Check out our store. Michael's rocking some some pretty cool uh, fall obsession gear. Heather's got our Midwest high gear on. You can see the hats. We got some new apparel. Kendra's got our – that's actually the head I usually wear when I hunt that Kendra has on. But that's actually the head that. I had on when I shot the turkey. But anyway. <laughs> Michael's got on my favorite sweatshirt. I love that sweatshirt. It's so comfortable. It's I love so it. Okay. I've got yeah. me one in the mail. I gotta have one of those sweatshirts. They're awesome. They are awesome. Yeah, I have to fight our kids for them because I'll see them and I was like, "Wait a minute, that's mine!" Like, leave mom's <laughs> stuff alone. But they don't. They take it anyway. But check out our apparel. Check out some of the other ser- series. Uh, you know, Texas Dirt is out there. We got the couch chats. We got the Midwest mindset. Michael, Michael, uh, you know, it's been some episodes for you guys to let you know some of the stuff that he talked about today when we were talking about arrows and talking about management. That's why I said he's the Jedi manager manager. <laughs> 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 <laughs>
So check all that stuff out. So have a good night, everyone. You too. Thanks for joining us. Oh. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. Grab the camera. Stay obsessed. <laughs> <laughs>